The Indian football team squad for the World Cup qualifier versus Afghanistan and Oman is out and a lot of fans have lost their minds over it. But should we really? Hi, I'm Ankur Sharma. You're watching Super Papa Ball, the home of Indian football fans. Welcome to Half Folly, where we hit the Indian football news as soon as it bounces off the ground. Let's get straight into VR, aka Very Article Review of the Week. The Indian football team squad for the World Cup qualifiers versus Afghanistan and Oman is finally out and well there are a few disappointments but before I get into all of those let me read out the squad for you. In goalkeepers we have got Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, Amrinder Singh and the big surprise is Dheerat Singh. Again uh, with ATK right now and I think kind of had it coming for a long time. Karanjeet Singh misses out, uh, got to feel bad for him but it's again third keeper not that he'll get a look into the team. For defenders, we've got Preetam Kota, Nishu Kumar, Rahul Beke, Anas Arathodika, Narendra, Adil Khan, Sartha Guloi, Subhashish Bose and Mandar Rao Desai. And again, the big miss out here is Seretan Fernandez. I'm sure you guys already know. Uh, I am disappointed over it. I do think that he deserves to be in the national team. But a lot, uh, a lot more fans have been losing their minds a lot more than I have over this. And I think fans should calm down a little. I think Igor Stimach is trying to use the same squad over and over again. He's got two options in the, in the right back position, that is Rahul Becky and Pritam Kodal. And both of them have not really given him a reason to be replaced, honestly. They are good. And Seretan Fernandez is at par with them. He needs consistency, he was to match with the squad. I think eventually, when Seretan Fernandez is doing better than Rahul Becky and Pritam Kodal, he will give him a chance. And I think we should be a little more patient with our coach. With midfielders, we have got Udanta Singh, Jackie Chan Singh, Sen Dongil, Rainian Fernandez, Vinit Rai, Sahel Abdul Samad, Pranay Halder, Anirudh Thapa, Lalit Zala Chante, Brandon Fernandez, and Ashik Kurnian. And again, the big miss out here is Michael Sairaj, a lot of fans' favourite. Again, I don't think he has done enough uh, to change the perception in Ego Stamash's eye yet. I do think he's a great player. I absolutely love watching him. He's so good on the ball. And I think he will eventually make it to the national team. He has knocked on the door before, but he, but to do it right now, I don't think uh, the change is needed. And forwards, we've got Sunil Chetri, Farooq Chaudhary and Manvir Singh. And I think uh, the big one I'm excited about in this one is Farooq Chaudhary, someone who has really come of age as soon as the ISL season has begun. I do think that one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, he is not that good. But the way he has been contributing to the Jamshedpur FC season this time around, it looks like he's a marquee player in the squad and not a young Indian player, which is a big, big compliment that I have to give him. He has just come of age and he looks like he's maturing into a man now. He takes himself a lot more seriously. If you look at him in the interviews, he, he speaks a certain way that he, he he's trying to assert himself. And I think with that comes uh, maturity on the football pitch as well. So I think Farooq Chaudhary is looking a lot better than he was and I'm excited to see him in these two qualifiers. In his football team and Kerala Blaster centre back, Sandeep Shingen has successfully gone under a knee surgery after the injury that he sustained against Northeast United, and I'm glad that he is on his way to recovery. Sandeep Shingen, I think, will be sorely missed in the upcoming few months for the national team, and I hope that the recovery is quicker than, he, uh, than we expect. I've seen his Instagram, and he's still trying to put in work with what he has, which is very typical of Sandeep Shingen, someone who never really gives up. You know, you, you look at him that way. And I think he'll be sorely missed. I think this is the time for other centre backs to step up and show that they can really fill in the spot. But Sandeep Singh, in my opinion, is, is pretty irreplaceable. I wish him a speedy recovery and I'm sure that the fans do as well. La Liga Football Club Levante is set to organise some training camps in India. This is after La Liga Football Schools announced that Sevilla, Celta de Vigo, and Real Betis will also be involved in some training camps in India. Now, what do I think about this? I think it's a bit of a gimmicky move. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do appreciate foreign clubs trying to invest in India and uh, trying to put money in, trying to gather audiences in. But their true intention is not to build football in India. Nobody really cares about football in India, will they? Not that I'm opposed to La Liga football schools or Premier League or Bundesliga football schools if they ever come in India. But I do think that the best way for a young kid to grow in football in India is to go to an Indian football club, to go to Indian football academies and really train under good quality coaches. because. Uh, honestly, if there is a parent watching right now, the best way to identify which place is the best for your kid to grow in football is to identify what badges the coaches hold in these academies and what are the hours that they train, not the marketing strategies. Now let's move to social heat map where I take the best of your comments, meet on SPF. This one is from Shijoy John. It's amazing how basic amenities are being overlooked at Kochi Stadium. A bottle of water is being sold for 60 rupees, that is three times the MRP. Do we really need to take Simpleton fans for granted? Now, Shuja, I absolutely agree with you and I'm glad you brought this up because this is something that I don't think people talk about enough. The prices of all beverages and food items in the stadium. Now, what you're talking about is water and I think 
water should definitely not be priced. While I understand that if you're eating something in the stadium, okay, it's highly priced, I can accept that. I can probably eat it after the game. But water is a basic necessity and to charge 60 bucks for a bottle of water, I think it's absolutely pathetic. I don't know who is deciding these prices. If it's the FSDL, then well, shame on them. If it's Kerala Blasters, shame on them. If it's the Kochi authorities or the stadium authorities, shame on them. Uh, someone needs to take a stand on all this because fans really spend their hard-earned money on watching a football game and if they have to come into the stadium and pay these over-the-top prices for basic things like water, well then, uh, I think a boycott is due, to be honest. Abnish says, After watching Udanta for months and at least for a few years, I can easily conclude that his performance has been very poor. Most of the time, his crosses are not accurate and he just runs with the ball, finds opponents, either loses the ball or passes back. And this has become a normal thing to watch on the right wing for both BFC and the Indian national team. Now, Avnish, I think I, while I do agree with you, I also disagree with you. I don't think that Odanta is not effective. I do think he's very, very effective and he's, he is, I think, indisputable in that right wing position. He's the best right winger we have in this country. So I will not say that he's not a good player. I enjoy watching Udanta Singh and I'm a big fan of him. And I think he is capable of achieving more than Sunil Chetri in the future if he really goes on to become a full scorer as well, uh, not just an assist Yes, I do think that he can be some reckless sometimes, doesn't make the right decision sometimes, passes back too much and his cross especially are not very accurate. I think he's got a lot of pace, a lot of panache, but the final product sometimes is missing. I do think that he's improved over it in the last couple of years. It's a complaint that I've heard from managers in the past as well about Udanda Singh, uh, ones I cannot name. But over the years, he has improved and you've got to give him some credit. Still very young. Now let's move to Suda Pandit where TD Indian football posts that impressed us the most. This one is from Raghu. A little disappointed, why not select players like Susaira, Saritan, Redeem, Jerry and Prabir? They are deserving of a chance in the national team, but I'm hoping for the best uh, for our coach and the team. Now, I agree with Raghu here. I am a little disappointed as well, but I think fans have overreacted to this whole situation, like I said in the uh, section 1. Listen, all of these players that Raghu just named, I absolutely agree that they are so, so good to watch that you kind of want to watch them in the national team as well. I understand, I share the same emotion, I am a fan as well. But ISL, only four games have happened yet. And to judge, for a coach to judge, a national team squad based on four games in the ISL is a little too much. He, he would like to play with the same team that he has, given that he only has a little, little amount of time to prepare for the two qualifiers. Consistency in the squad is really important and you have to cut your coach some slack. Understand the situation. Anish says, Kerala Blasters seemed impressive in the first match, then lost to Mumbai City FC at home, but Mumbai City have been toiled by Odisha FC before and FC Goa now. It seems like a huge disappointment is coming up for Maniapara this season too. Now, Anish seems to bring up something that I think everyone is quietly thinking about right now. Is Maniapara, is Kerala Blasters going to have one of those seasons again? I think the way they uh, went about their business before the football season, I think it was spectacular to watch, to get one of the most um, most respected managers in the Indian game right now, in Neil Koshitori, and then also the players that they got around him. It was brilliant, right? The squad looks amazing. The fans have turned up again and you kind of felt that a party atmosphere is now due. But on the football pitch, it still seemed to be lacking a little. Now, I do think it's early days in the season and things can change, but I think some massive changes need to be made in the way Carol Bastos is playing right now. I think they need to take the game to the opposition a lot more. And while I do think refereeing decisions have plagued the results as well, but it's not only Kerala Blasters that have been affected by all of this. I think Kerala Blasters fans absolutely deserve to be in the top four this time around. I do think Ilgo Shadori deserves a little more of a chance and even if this season is a failure in terms of getting to the top four, I think he deserves another season. But Kerala Blasters fans might soon lose patience. So guys, that's it for this episode of Half Holy. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, I've been Ankur Sharma. You're watching Super Bowl, the home of any football fans. I'll see you in the next video.